What's up, folks? Life with Brock. I'm gonna do some painting tonight. I've been working on custom cable action figure. I know there's nobody in here right now, but I'm sure there will be in a little bit. I don't even know what day it is. I'm not feeling too hot, but I wanna get to painting. So the plan is, is to paint some faces. Got this this face and then the, uh, got a couple other ones up there. What's up, Raymond? All right, so for tonight, what I will be doing, let me see, I gotta turn down the music. I have a little bit of a headache. What's up, Cody? I'm going to be using a mixture of the Citadel paints. What's up, Jose? Toy Thief, what's up? And uh, I'm going to focus on on painting a couple faces just to, to show you how I go about doing it. Now, I'm taking a chance here with, with this one because when I primed it, and I'll talk about my priming method in a second, but when I primed it, I really didn't want, feel like painting the eyes because I liked how the eyes were painted on this figure already. And the same thing with this other guy right here. What's up, Crescent? Crescent Moon Animations, welcome. I didn't feel like painting this again. So this is it, I've never done this before. I usually prime the whole figure. What's up, figure? Figure Kong. Uh, I usually uh, prime everything, but I decided I'm, I'm gonna try something a little bit different because I wanted to keep the, the paint that was already there. Uh, primarily because I don't think I'm gonna repaint this, uh, this arm. I like the color. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a wash to this uh, silver. And uh, I mean, I may end up changing my mind later since I'll be working on that second. So my, my goal uh, for this session is to paint some faces and then maybe p do uh, some, some uh, body paint, leg paint, uh, focusing on the flesh and then the overall coat. And hopefully what I'm gonna be able to display is just the, the patience of laying the layers down and not getting uh, too rushed. So I may, it may be a little bit uh, much for one session, so I'll go live again, uh, possibly tomorrow. And uh, let me see what, oh, and none of this is gonna be with my airbrush. This is all gonna be hand painted, at least for this figure. And then if I end up um, for that other cable, I may end up going, thanks honey. My wife just brought me some, some coffee. Uh, I think for that other figure, I may use the airbrush and then I'll go live. What's up, Hot Cheeto Fingers? Toy Tube, what's up, player? Congratulations on 300, I saw you got that. Uh, we mentioned you on uh, the Collector Spotlight because you found those Thanoses. Figure Kong, que pasó, chico? And uh, let me get to it. So I'll check on the comments occasionally. And uh, let me turn on some music here. No copyright music. If I miss your question, just be persistent and uh, I'll eventually answer it. All right, so let's get going on this. So here are the paints that I'm gonna be using. And they're all Citadel paints. I'm actually not gonna be using any Vallejo paints for the skin tone. And for those of you that have painted with Citadel paints, you already notice they're in a different container. Well, I hate those other containers. The paint dries out really quick. So I transferred them here. I have a video on my channel if you are interested uh, to see how I transferred that. And those are the paints I'm gonna use. And hopefully it's gonna turn out pretty good. So I love all sorts of music. I just can't use it on here <laughs> because I'll get a copyright strike because it is on YouTube. And uh, I saw that comment come in. 
I sculpted this beard. This was the first time I ever sculpted a beard and it actually, amazingly, it, it came out and I'm not, I'm not trying to talk too high on myself. I'm just excited, but it, it came out like one of the, uh, the pro customizers did it. And uh, I have no idea. I don't know if I could replicate it, but it looks pretty darn good. Thanks, man. I'll be painting him in a little bit. All right. So first one, let's get to Bugman's Glow. This is gonna be the base. Now these paints have already been thinned down. So let's see how it goes. this or not yeah this is a skill that I never thought I'd I'd obtain to and then you just gotta get after it, guys, if you're interested in doing your own customs. I never took art in school. By the way, it's not easy painting with a camera in front of uh, your face, but I feel like I need to do stuff like this. There's some really good customizers that thankfully have started to do it, like Craig Warwick. He's one of my favorite guys to watch. He is, he is a master. He does not take emissions. Not that I could afford him. But uh, if I wanted, if I would ever want to have someone else's work, it'd be him. He's amazing. If you haven't checked out his channel, go check him out. He uh, he goes live. He's been doing live more live sessions recently, and I think the reason that he ends up doing that. You can hear my dog lapping up the water in the background. I think the reason he does that is because he's not taking commissions, so he's he's fine with sharing the skills with the rest of the the community, which is pretty cool. Holy smokes. I could Oh, I thought that was the male dog. It's the female dog. Holy. Holy smokes. She was thirsty. I don't know if you guys can hear that. but I can hear it to the point where it's bothering me. <laughs> so I'll probably do a couple of uh, layers on him and let it dry in between. Cast that bearded head. <laughs> oh, you guys are too nice. Too nice players. Speaking of the bearded head, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep this music on because it's already driving me nuts. Anybody else? There's just too much noise going back. I can't even. I can't relax. Life is happening here at my house, and I don't have. I'm at the. I'm at my workstation, aka the kitchen table, right now, guys. I can't even hide. I guess what I could do is put headphones on. Another thing I could do, because I'm not as young as you guys, as some of you guys anyway, is I need to use magnifying glass when I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. 
It's probably going to be distorted for you guys to see. I think for the next round, I'm going to go with the uh, a smaller brush, so I can get in, get in there. I'm gonna do a Nightwing eventually. I've had that head for a while. This was a failed attempt. That was an Iden Versio head that I was working on. It fell, it fell from my bookshelf and the little dog chewed the heck out of it. <laughs> so I had to rework it and I don't even know if I'm gonna use that because I went to a guy that casted or, or did a 3D sculpt of Iden Versio and it, it came out amazing. So I'll probably end up using that. Soundproof headphones, huh? I, you know, I, I actually have some of those. I may just do that. Yeah, battle damage. All right, let me do a second round on this guy. I think I like, I really like using this brush. It's one of my newer brushes that I got, and it wasn't that expensive. I like the control of it, but I need something a little bit smaller to get into the crevices. I don't really want to paint over this uh, this part right here. Okay, uh, let me talk about the priming method, guys. This this is something that's helped me visualize where I need to uh, where things need to be highlighted and shaded. And uh, let me use this this one as an example. I learned this. I had I had heard it talked about, but I didn't actually understand it until I saw it explained by uh, Action Figure Toronto. Talk about another master customizer. Well, anyway, the way you prime here is uh, origin. You just you prime the figure black first, or whatever part you're using first, and then what you want to do. Let me turn down this music so I can concentrate. Then at an angle, you, you start at, a, at an angle where, and then you, you do gray. And then your angle gets sharper and sharper and finally end up with a white. So what it does is it shows where uh, the figure will have its natural, like if the sun was hitting it, where, what part of the, uh, you know, the hair would be highlighted, what parts of the face would be darker, see like his, the inner parts of his eyes and the bottom part of his lip here, the, part, the, the bottom parts of the hair, the crevices are darker. So it's given me an idea of, of where to put the paint and highlights and shades, kind of like a visual thing, and it could be done with every single part. What's up, Jaime? See? That's gonna be, uh, <laughs> this is a part I cannibalized from one of these Gears of War figures and I just dremeled the heck out of it. So it it's eventually gonna become, or it's gonna become his shin guard. I might have to do some sculpting afterwards, but that's where it's gonna go. I sound like Barry White. Barry White. I don't think that's a good sign. I think I might be getting sick. All right. Moving on. I remember when I when I first started painting, when I first got into this part of the hobby, which I highly recommend you guys at least try, I used to use a ton of paint. 
until I realized it's not about the amount of paint that you do on one stroke. It's about layering paints. And again, I'm not a trained painter by any means. Do I think that I'm something at this, but I'm just passing on things that have been helpful for me. I'm going to have to get in there. And again, this is uh, Bugman's Glow. And it's a base color. It even says base on it. And I'm literally, literally, because of this part, come on, girl, get out there. Just using like a drop or two at a time. Now I'm typically not this careful with the base, but because I chose not to uh, prime that eyeball and I wanted to use the paint that was there already, that's why I'm, I'm doing this. I may find out, this is the first time I've ever done it, that I don't wanna ever do that again and I'll just repaint it. And my eyeballs have been okay. The last figure I painted, Thanos, that was actually pretty easy to do. I didn't have to worry about because it was just one, one single color. So it was actually fairly easy. I'll check the chat in a second, guys. Thanks for being here and spending some time Nineteen people. What is crack a lacking? All right, let me see if I. Hi, mid. Uh, this is uh, Citadel Paints. You can pick them up. Uh, I pick them up at a comic book store in my in my town. Oh, you think that looks gold? Really? It's like a brown. Unless I'm misunderstanding. Yeah, Ivan, that's why I, I wanted to do it. I, I lost my train of thought. The reason I want to do this is because, you know, when I first got in, into this a few years ago, there a few years ago, like two years ago, there weren't many people doing it. I guess I'm going to have to repaint this eyeball. I thought I had covered it, but apparently I didn't. So I guess I'll be repainting that one. And uh, I think it's a fun part of the hobby. And as you can tell, I go slow. By the way, I don't do commissions. <laughs> if Maybe if I was like a speed painter, <laughs> I may do something. But otherwise, heck no. Heck no. Take way too long. And if I were to j even charge a like minimum wage, which would be ridiculous for me. I'm, I got a master's degree, players. I got a master's degree. I command more more wage than that. But anyway, my I'm just messing. Uh, it just wouldn't make sense. And plus, when I when I work on something like this. I want to keep it because, shoot, I'd rather, I'd rather keep something like this than, uh, than a Marvel Legend that 
even of, a, of you know, one of my favorite characters, like a Wolverine. Like, I'm going to repaint um, Hot Cheeto Fingers, I think, is may still be in the chat. He did a, uh, an X-Force Wolverine, and I'm going, dude, I think I want to do one of those, too. And because it, it takes me a while, it makes me spend less money, <laughs> at least on figures, anyway. All right. Let me do another coat of that. Let me check the chat. Oh, th thanks, Twitch Thief. Water-based or oil? It's acrylic-based. So it's like it, it, water. It's definitely not oil. If I had a superpower... Mm, you know, now that my body's kind of broken because I'm getting older, I'd like to have the like healing factor. <laughs> I like people too, so sometimes I want to know what people are thinking, but I don't know if that superpower would be good to have. <laughs> hey, Cody, uh, I did not make any money on that Levi's commercial. It was for that lady's, um, it was kind of like for her portfolio. So she was, a, I think that's, she was an, like an aspiring producer. And uh, I mean, it was a legitimate shoot. For back in that time, oh shoot, I just remembered I forgot to do something. I'm going to show you this in a second. So I'm going to mix uh, epoxy here because what I like to do when I, when I repaint figures, I like to fill in the holes, the peg holes. And I hadn't done it for, for these arms yet, so I'm going to... I'm gonna let that cure for a little bit and fill it in. And then let me see. Thanks, Adam. Ultimate Legends, what's up, bro? Uh, how do I keep paint from chipping? So there, there's some techniques. Uh, make sure you go and check. I think I talked pretty, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll give you the answer real quick. Uh, there's, there's a few steps that you can do to keep paint from chipping, but I talked about it at length in, in the previous live videos when I was breaking apart those figures. So one of the things that you do is you gotta wash your figure, then you have to sand down the joints, and I explain how to do that. Uh, you, I mean, you, you break it down to where, where are the kneecaps here? I forgot where I put them. Are they in, they're, trust me, they're in there anywhere. The, the kneecaps for those hinges, I mean, you, you pull everything out and you sand it down. So that way there's no friction points. And that's what you're trying to prevent. You're trying to prevent friction because friction's what's gonna, what's gonna um, chip your paint. And then after you're done painting, you wanna seal it. And the way you seal it, there, there's numerous uh, ways that you seal it. You can seal it with a gloss. You can seal it with Pledge Floor Shine, Floor Cleaner, which I've transferred some here. It's acrylic based, also used for painting as a your medium, the stuff that you mix your paints with. So I need to let that, where's the little ball? Let me put it right here so I don't forget about it. So I'm gonna let that sit probably like for maybe 15 minutes because right now it's really sticky really sticky so i wait until it cures a little bit and what this is kind of like cement the longer it goes the harder it gets so eventually uh let me see if i have a good example oh well not a good example but uh this torso right here was a nuke body and you know there's muscles here and i wanted to make it look like a shirt i didn't do that much sculpting but this is epoxy that i put on there because I'm kind of going, I was, I'm gonna do, I wanna do that guy. That's how I'm gonna sort of paint it, except the pants are gonna be a little bit greener than that. And then the other custom, it's gonna turn out looking pretty much like that, hopefully. Uh, that's Carlos, uh, um, wait a second, did I get his name? Beltran, it's, I think it's, Ad it's Adrian Beltran. Carlos Beltran was a baseball player, <laughs> or may, may still be a baseball player, but anyway. Uh, 
So for example, uh, one of the things that I had to do because I had already, th this was kind of like an afterthought, this figure, because I was only gonna really do one, but then I go, man, I have all these extra parts for cable. Let me make a second cable, why not? And that's how I got that bearded face. It's not even, like this doesn't appear anywhere. Uh, this iteration of the character, he is uh, clean shaven. He doesn't have a mustache. There is a, an iteration where there's a, he, it's a beard and there's one that's a goatee, but he doesn't have this uh, metallic uh, face. He's not part cyborg or whatever the heck he is. I don't know that. I don't know much about that history. I just know about the 90s cable. I know more about that. That's when I was reading comic books. So uh, this was kind of an afterthought. So I just started like throwing it together. And after I had glued everything apart, I'm going, oh shoot, I'm gonna have some some paint rub. Thanks, Mike. And so what I did is I shaved down here. You see, I, I've kind of come in after the fact and I'm shaving down, uh, or Dremel down. And it doesn't look pretty. Did not look pretty because I'm doing it after the fact and I was probably using the wrong uh, drill bit so see here's another example of me getting rid of the paint rub right there that that joint let me see if it's focusing that joint right there i shaved it down it's stuff that when i first started customizing i paid no attention to and that's why when when i go back and i pull out some of my old customs like an apocalypse cost custom uh which turned out pretty good for being one of my uh early ones he's got there's paint rub especially on his feet because this is another area, and again, I cover that at length in other videos, that, that's been sanded. I'm hoping I sanded enough, but thankfully it's gonna be the same, similar color. I'm gonna paint these boots brown, so uh, we're gonna be okay. All right, let's move on, and uh, let me see the coverage on this. Just a little bit more. All right, so the next one I'm gonna do is flayed one flesh. And this, I'm kinda of gonna dry brush on here. And let me see if I have a different, a better brush to, to do this dry brush on. Let me use this one. Dry brush, uh, there's probably better brushes. It'd be a bit better if this, this wouldn't be so long. I've seen people use it and, uh, when you're dry brushing, you just uh, you want to leave just a little bit of paint on the brush, and let that paint as you're as you're working it. And you're gonna see here in a second. Just let the the paint barely come off the uh, the brush. See if this is enough. So it's gonna actually look like zombie-ish in a second here. So it's gonna have to get ugly before it gets pretty. <laughs> or it may just come out completely ugly because this is actually the first time I'm painting and concentrating when I'm uh, when I have people watching me paint. But I mean, this is this is pretty much it, guys. This is how painting is, and it's just, I guess the the best advice I can give you, other than don't use less paint than you think you need, and then just work up the the layers. If you have to do multiple layers, fine. Just let the paint dry in between 
the layers because if you don't let the paint dry in between the layers, you're going to be actually uh, mixing the paint and pulling paint off, which is another thing. If you, if you press too hard with the brush, and you'll probably see me doing it here because, again, I'm just passing on information I've learned from other people that do this a lot better than me. that go and I'm gonna bring homie G in let me check the chat real quick see if I if I missed you hello ultimate legends what's up thanks Adam how do you keep okay I answered that question go for transformation okay cool Mike Moradea you know, I think, I, I don't know why I keep on calling you Moradea, but I know it's Moreda. Moreda. Thanks, uh, creator animator. I appreciate your compliment. Yeah, it does look pretty darn good. Uh, beginner's luck, Mike, for real. Ah, uh, if you saw it in person, uh, um, Raymond says, uh, I, I really don't have to paint the hair, but if you see it in person, you would change your mind. You would see it, it doesn't look as natural that hopefully uh, as I'm gonna be able to get it here. And as I'm talking, I'm letting my paint dry. Okay, I need to put more paint in here. Where's my flayed one flesh? Now, typically, guys, I would have to mix the paints, but since I transferred the, this from the uh, Citadel container, I had already mixed it. I pre-mixed it. So these are pre-mixed. They're kind of ready to go in this state, uh, ready for you know base coats and layers and stuff like that. They wouldn't be ready for washes, and I'm going to do a wash here in a second. Well, not in a second, but in, as one of the steps. That's coming on a little bit thick. Too late. See, it's already on a little bit thick, but got to power through, players. Got to power through. And uh, you saw me painting in different directions there. That's not advisable. Just keep your your strokes going in the same direction. And then maybe, you know, the next time and this brush is not gonna be able to get into the little crevices, so I'm gonna to have to use something else. Just go in one direction. Kinda of like the boy band that you guys watch. Just kidding. Bad joke, bad old man joke. Another thing that you can do, you can blow on the, the paints to, to dry in between. I didn't really like that layer. Put that in water. So I think I'm gonna use this one so I can get up in there. I probably, probably should have used, let me see. And you're wondering, why am I gonna be using so many different paints to paint the flesh on, this, on these guys? Well, take a look in the mirror and you'll see that your skin tone isn't um, very even either. There's different reds and pigments and stuff like that. And it, I like the look at it, the look of it more. Uh, and that's because I'm wanting to make these guys look a little bit more realistic. I've seen it, like I've seen some of the Star Wars, um, and the Clone War uh, figures that people have customized that they've given more of a cartoony look and it looks awesome. That's not what I'm going for here. That cartoony look too uh, looks pretty good. And I, some of these guys that are um, very handy with different uh, airbrush tools or the different size airbrushes, uh, they're 
they turn out to be pretty phenomenal. Yeah, I get them crevices. <laughs> Chicken fried steak. Ricky Ricardo. Oye, chico, mira, les voy a decir una cosa. Los cubanos aquí, ustedes saben que Cuba, yo no creo que hay pintura en Cuba. Jimpy, ¿qué pasó? Hey, guys, Eric Sarton in the house. He's uh, one of my toy hookups in the area. Hey, Eric, by the way, I went, I'm not sure if the, the one uh, that your family was scoping out for you was the one by the Toys R Us, but I went there. I did a little toy hunt with a special guest that I'm going to have in one of my future hunt videos. <laughs> uh, but anyways, they have them there, but they're not releasing them. And I, so I can't remember if that's the one where your peeps went to. And if they did, well, there you have it. Okay. So uh, if you're ever going to use this uh, uh, epoxy stuff, uh, it's very sticky. So you want to use water. So I'm putting it, I'm just laying it on there and there's no great way of doing this. I like to use a toothpick and the reason I use a toothpick, uh, you guys have been around the toy community for a while, you uh, will have either watched one of his videos or heard somebody talk about him, Glenn Webb. He passed away, um, I wanna say about a, a year and a half, two years ago. I'm pretty sad, it was kind of sudden and unexpected, but I would see him, I would watch a lot of his videos and that's what he would use, uh, toothpicks. Uh, this isn't gonna take me sculpting much. All I'm gonna try to do here is smooth it. Um, so, it, I mean, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but that's not completely, it's like too much inside, but I'm gonna have to let that go a little bit, and then I'm gonna do this side. Yeah, they have them in stock, but at least what I was told, and you may have already mentioned it and I didn't catch your comment, but they're not releasing them. Fortunately for me, and for some of my viewers who are brave enough to try their own custom Thanos, I don't need to worry about that Walgreens exclusive. Uh, I Obviously I'm gonna like mine more because it means a little bit more. Uh, I highly recommend, if you guys are thinking about starting customizing i recommend that you do that thanos it it's very minimal kit bash and the rest is just uh and it's i mean i'm talking minimal kit bash and the rest is just painting which you can do uh with a brush i did mine i tried out i'm uh, learning how to use an airbrush and it came up um, pretty nice for for my skill level but eric i was thinking about after i talked to you uh, you could use a first appearance Hulk and, uh, and combine that with the Marvel Select. And man, I have an extra, I have a couple extra of those figures. I may do another one. <laughs> I don't know why, but I, I, f I feel that that would be a really good mix of parts. Maybe I'm wrong. I I'd have to take a closer look. I don't have, obviously, I don't have Select Thanos anymore. But guys, if you are... That's something that you should really just go for it uh, because it will look better than what's being released. No doubt. I mean, I think the Marvel Select looks better than what's being released, but I, since I'm just saying it to you guys, I haven't been saying it on the boards because I don't want to hurt people's feelings because they've been excited about finding it and stuff like that. And I don't want to be a party pooper. I'm not that type of person. Uh, but yeah, do your own. Uh, it It does not take much. Uh, skill and even if you screwed up it'll probably still look good <laughs> let me let me scan through this chat oh, oh no I lost like 10 people when I was saying that figure Kong says I know it's a random question but do you think it would be a bad idea to add the Thanos Titan Heroes figure to my MC hmm I'd have to Oh, the MCU? I'd have to see the Titan Hero figure. I, Cody, I agree. I, again, I didn't want to rain in people's parade because I think the colors do look better. 
but I think it's mostly plastic. I don't think it's really uh, painted. So here, see how that doesn't look even with that? So I'm just gonna push. Ultimately, I've heard of some other people say this, uh, the more you work at this end, the less you're gonna have to sand at the end. So what I'm gonna do here eventually, I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit and then I'm gonna try to draw this line so it matches the rest of the sculpt. This side, I'm probably gonna have to add more, more stuff to in a little bit. All right, let's get back to painting since this is supposed to be painting live. All right, peeps. Uh, Jose asks, have you ever thought of doing a custom figure from scratch? Uh, absolutely not. I, I, I'll tell you right now, I won't do that, Jose, because uh, I am not a good sculptor. And even even the good sculptors, this is plastic, so they would have to, I don't know, you'd have to mold plastic pieces. No, uh, that's something that, that uh, I personally won't even be attempting unless uh, something drastic happens and I don't I don't think so all right moving on to the paint so I've already used uh, Bugman's glow and flayed one flesh now I'm gonna go back to where the heck's my Bugman's glow so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a wash and it's it, it it's already it's already kind of done but I'm gonna do it anyway again what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a wash and I wash not in, in the uh, the truest sense of the word because I'm actually going to leave it on there. I'm going to put water and a little bit of uh, Bugman's Glow and I'm just going to kind of glaze it underneath the eyes to give it a, a little bit of darker tint. So I'm going to use, probably going to use that, that brush right there. Hey, I don't know what thumbs up do on YouTube. But I like seeing them. <laughs> so if you're in here, drop me a thumbs up, players, if you like what you're seeing. All right. Oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot the water. Now I have... Son of... Okay. You guys, hold the fort down. Hold the fort down for me. I'm almost there, players. Forgot to put a little water bottle. I like to use clean water, and I was gonna go use my, uh, what I've been dropping these into, and I go, oh crap, I wasn't ready. So I just have uh, this here. I'm just gonna add one droplet. And I'm gonna mix the paint and see what that looks like. And I'll do it here so you guys can see. I almost want it runny. That's a little milky, so I'm gonna. I want it a little bit thinner than milk consistency. Uh, I've been painting at about milk consistency, if that makes any sense to you. So I'm just mixing. Uh, this is called medium. And that's medium can be used, uh, it's just used to, to thin your paint. So this is gonna look like he's gonna have raccoon eyes, okay? And that effect is kinda there already from the Bugman's glow that I didn't get up on the crevices. I'm gonna paint down his nose too. And you may not even be able to see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. I think you can see it through the through the lens of the camera here. Eyes, nose, and lips. I'm gonna get it right underneath the nose part right here. Like he's got some mocos. Get in the crevices. And the crevices typically are gonna be where the shadows are. 
So you see, you see in this figure, you see how that right underneath Nightwing's lip, lower lip right there, it's darker. That's the idea of, of he's not as wrinkly as uh, Cable, obviously, because he's a young dude compared to this old man. You want to get him in the ears too. Just places where light is not going to be as strong and the places where it's going to look, you know, darker. It's probably going to be a little bit darker down here. He's wrinkly, this, this guy. I like this song. Oh, matter of fact, I used this in one of my recent hunt videos. It was when my wife was doing Brokonomics for dummies. <laughs> I got a good family, guys. Good wife. Great wife. Very supportive. Those of you guys that are not married, being married can be a wonderful thing. Forgot to paint back here. So before I get too far. Get it before that hits the, the wash part. I forgot this area behind his ear. go hit those parts again just a little bit going on 16 years of marriage and one of the things one of the important things is we share the same faith so faith in uh, we're Christians and even before we were married at church, we would go to classes together, parenting classes and stuff of that nature. Don't worry, I'm not gonna be preaching the whole time, guys, but I think marriage is important. I like to talk about it and promote it, especially in today's society. But we had the same mindset about family, about views on just, I mean, a lot of the same views and they got worked out because when we're studying the Bible, we're coming Fortunately, we're coming to very similar con conclusions. We have very defined roles. And I don't know if you guys have watched any of my previous, other than custom videos, but you can see my interaction with my family. It's, I think it's good. I, I hope that you guys are seeing that, especially young, young men out there. Um, very important to be involved with your family and putting your wife first, putting your wife before your, your children. Because you've put your, your kids before your wife. When your kids are gone, you're not going to know your, your wife. <laughs> All right, before I move on to this one, let me, let me run through the chat. Oh, there's quite a bit. Uh, did I do custom from scratch? Okay, that's where I started. Yeah, exactly, Cody. It looks marbleized, that, that Thanos. But, you know, I like the blue. I, I don't really like the yellow. But the blue looks like the... Um, um, what was it? Shoot, what was the name of the figure? Death Heads 2. Figure Kong asked, what do you think if we got a Legends Hulk wave and the bath would be Scar? Oh, oh that would be cool. Uh, I think there was a Scar way... I think in the Toybus era, there was a Scar. I, I like that character. I don't know too much about him other than he's Hulk's son. Got a lot of th thumbs up. Maybe it's what I was saying. A war new warpath. I think I think he's in the works from what I heard. Don't take my word for that. I I feel like I just heard somebody talking about that. I guess I only have to work on this eye. <laughs> I was about to go to that eye. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> Forgot. I think somebody was saying goodbye. Peace out, Jose. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Thanks for hanging out. 
Mira quién está aquí. Saludos de Tijuana. Bueno, saludos aquí de Santa Clarita, California. Bienvenido al canal. Do you speak English or just Spanish? Peace to you, Richie. I think that's going to be a little bit darker, and so is this. See it right in that crevice. I got to get up in there. Got to get up in there. And I think probably right, right at that beard line, that beard line is going to be darker. I'm trying to think of the eyeball right here. All right, bilingual, me too. Some of you may be surprised that that English is my second language. All right, let's see who we have up here. We have 14 people. How many languages do we have other than English? Obviously, it's going to be most of you. And uh, I, I'm sure some of you have taken Spanish in school. So you have a little bit of experience. Let me take a little sip of my, guys, Americano with steamed half and half. My favorite drink. What other languages do we have here? I had some uh, some people from uh, Brazil in one of my previous uh, chat sessions. Okay, so the next one I'm going to move up is going to be uh, Kislev Flesh. And then I was just remembering that I forgot to do something. Look at this, guys. Look what I forgot over here. This ear. It's like it's going to melt into the to the head. And this ear. What was I thinking? So I missed every single step. Let me see if this one over here I can catch up. Forgot to paint the ears. So I got to lay down the base first. So if you just hopped on. I'm going over how to how I know how to paint flesh, and uh, there's more than one way to do it. There's many different uh, paint companies. I'm using Citadel paints to paint this flesh tone. So okay, I can touch up that later. I'm gonna paint his hair. I don't want it to pull in here because then I won't be able to. <laughs> I almost forgot to paint his ears, players. How come you guys didn't catch it? You guys missed it too. What's up, Sith? Okay, you're trilingual. Let's hear the span. Okay, so I'm guessing since you're from Houston, Texas, you're going to speak English, Spanish, and? English, Spanish, and? I'm just letting that dry. I want to do the um, the flayed one flesh on it. Because my Dumbo eyes here missed the, uh, the ears the first time around. Thanks for Sean. I'm still waiting for Th Sith. There must be some a little bit of a delay. I'm sure there is actually. I want to know what's okay. <laughs> Charlie Holmes. <laughs> uh, that's good. Got me. Got me. I was hoping we get some Armenians in here because I, I know it's some Armenian. I was hoping we we get some Koreans up in here because I know a little bit of Korean. I know some Greek. I know some Italian. Some French. I love languages. I love languages. <laughs> I 
Raymond says, come on, Brock, we can't catch everything. We're human left. He would without seeing cast the first stone. <laughs> you know what sin means? Literally, sin, the, the Greek word is hamartia, if I'm remembering correctly from when I studied Greek. But it's missing the mark. It's like an archer. And uh, the bullseye is perfection. And sin is missing, just being a little bit off. And that's how it was explained to me a long time ago. All right. So did we do the kiss left flesh already? I feel like I haven't done the kiss left flesh already. I haven't. Okay. How about some Africa? <laughs> What, Rashawn, remind me. I, I watched the movie. Remind me what that was about. What did he, what was he saying? I really liked that movie. My brother-in-law uh, is debating on whether to take his son and watch that movie because he, his son's young, and actually, just he's going to be my special guest, Hunter, and uh, it'd be good for him to see. He's African American, so he'd be uh, he'd be good to. Uh, I think it'd be good for him to see a black superhero, especially the way I like the way that the culture was represented. Just fantastic. That's good. There's no gangsters that can claim that culture. You know what I mean? They just very. I just loved it. I loved everything about it. Too hard to explain. All right, let's go lightly. I wonder if I should water this down a little bit. I feel like I should, let me see. I'm afraid. So now, I'm hoping that was light enough. And I don't want to get up in that Bugman's glow. I think it may be raining over here. Hey, is it raining? Yeah. It's raining up in here. How about that, guys? Some, oh, see, I just screwed that up. That was too heavy. Too heavy right there. Let me see if I can get get rid of it. Let me give you some water. There we go. All I did there, I just watered because uh, somebody was asking earlier, if this is acrylic and it's a water-based paint. So I just put a little bit more water on my brush and took it with me. Took it with me. Notice the first time I was, I was painting downwards, now I'm trying to paint side to side just for coverage. Now I'm gonna check to make sure that my paint is light enough here. There we go. Some places I can't paint all the way to the side. Hey, can you guys do me a favor and tell me if I'm keeping this on the camera? I feel like I am. I did it again. Put a little bit of water on my, on my brush. And it's okay if the, the paint's a little bit watery. Again, from my experience on this step, 
because it's it's going on lightly. It's not it's not very harsh or uh, strong. See how like I move it and it you can still see the wrinkles, the color and the wrinkles. That just means it's just it's not it's not gonna cover, and I don't want it to cover the paint that's already on there. I want it to to kind of blend. Now I learned this technique, uh, especially with these paints from this guy named Jason Harrop. He's uh, he's into Star Wars, but as you can see, I am not doing Star Wars here. I do do Star Wars. I'm a fan, and I recently did a Yoda that came out okay. I need to do some paint retouches because he fell off my shelf and some of his face paint chipped. So he's looking at the colors coming out because he is a white dude, <laughs> an old white dude. But I gotta let that sit now. I'm gonna let it dry. And now I'm gonna do this guy. But let me check the chat. We got 16 peeps up in here. Uh, Raymond says, I did not know that. And now I know and knowing is half the battle. Yo, Joe, Cody Spring says, Rashawn says the movie cinematography, yeah, it, it, Rashawn says the cinematography was beautiful. It really was. That opening scene when, they, when they're coming into Wakanda, impressive, man. I, love, I loved it. Loved it. Jay Perez asks, what's the craziest custom that I've done? Hmm. I would say one of the hardest... I mean, there, there's been a few uh, kit bashes that were difficult for me just because my experience level was was very little. Uh, I would say my uh, apocalypse, that really stretched my, my, it stretched me out of my comfort zone, sculpting wise, kit bash wise. Uh, the painting was all done by hand. Actually, I think the face sculpt I did, I painted pretty well on that. I did a mixture of blues that came out pretty nice. I wish I would have had an airbrush at that point because I think airbrushing it would have looked because it's a bigger figure. Uh, I feel like if I have a bigger canvas, I have um, it's an easier go for me. Uh, airbrushing, I, I barely, I haven't airbrushed that much. So I would say that one. Richie, uh, uh, have I recommended an airbrush gun? The one I'm using currently is a cheap, the cheapest one I could find because I wasn't sure if I was gonna continue doing it. So I picked the, the cheapest one I could and I've actually enjoyed using the airbrush and I feel like I can use it. It's tricky to learn because with acrylic paints, something that happens is you get dry tip and that's not a, Naughty reference, guys. It is, it it happens and uh, it clogs. You're not able to paint, or your paint comes out like uh, like thick, thicker and thinner in some areas. And so that's one of the things that I was struggling with. And it could be because I, I have a cheap airbrush, <laughs> Brockonomics. Uh, I bought myself a cheap airbrush on on Amazon. And uh, and then recently, Badger Brush Airbrush, which has a very good reputation, had a sale, like a super sale. So I picked one up, but they had thousands of orders. Okay, I'm gonna need more paint. And that was the, uh, I believe it's the Kiss Live. Survey says, yeah, it was the kiss lip. So I haven't gotten my new airbrush, so I, I don't know what painting with a high quality airbrush is. Uh, as soon as I get that and I use it, if I see a marked difference, you will hear me on my videos recommending. And now the, the people that know, that, that, that talk about airbrushes, they, they say, yeah, get yourself a, an expensive airbrush. It's worth it. Uh, they see a qualitative difference, but I can't rec I I can't say for sure yet because I haven't used it. But if I had to take a guess, 
it's probably going to be a, a thousand times better experience than I've had. I mean, I had a guy, a Tokyo model detective. He's a, he's a guy that runs, he has a business, but he has a channel. He does model kit building. And I ran into him. I actually haven't talked to him in a time in a, in a while. So Darren, if you ever catch this, probably won't be catching this because he, he has nothing to learn from me where painting's concerned. The guy's a master at his craft. He, I believe he uses, he has like a bazillion brushes, but he, he uses, he's in Japan, so he, uh, I think it's the Iwata, and he has a bunch of different versions of Iwata brushes. I'm not liking how this is coming out on this guy right here. The paint's kind of sloppy. I'm talking too much. Talk too much, and you never shut up. So I guess that was a long-winded answer is that I can't really recommend one. Uh, I can recommend getting a cheap one and just giving it a go because you really I hope, I hope if you're going to try, you've at least hand-painted stuff already and kit-bashed. I think that's the, the first thing that, that new customizers or beginning customizers really are – people that want to go give it a go is um, is learning how to kit bash figures learning how to crack a figure open <laughs> I cracked a couple open on uh, the last couple of sessions and I had a tough time and I've cracked the, quite a few figures open there's something I'm not I'm not I'm, I'm liking the, the other one better how that one's coming around I don't know if you guys can tell any difference but I think it's my, I got sloppy with my brush strokes here. I kind of need something thinner to get up in there. Concho chico, vamos. Cuz it looks okay. Let me let me stop touching that and maybe give it a break. Let me run through the comments. What's up, Ebic? What is, uh, he asks, uh, what is your opinion on the Tamiya paint? Tamiya, I don't, I don't think I have any Tamiya paints. I don't think I've used Tamiya paints. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I have. Uh, I've heard they're good. I just have no experience with them. Andrew Sandoval, <laughs> make me a commission piece. Hey, player, you missed it, but I, I don't do commissions. I, I appreciate it. That's a, every time that somebody asks me that, it's, uh, I take that as a compliment, but I just, I really, I don't have time to do it. My, my pieces take such a long time that financially it would not make sense for me to sell them. And, and I just, uh, it would be too hard for me to let go of something that I work, you know, 20 hours on. Dislike because SOS Hunter dislikes because you don't do commissions. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. I'll tell you what, player, you keep talking like that. When when you're on collector spotlight, you will be crying. <laughs> Raymond says, I wouldn't say that he wouldn't catch your video because he's a Oh, uh, yeah, if you saw his work, Raymond, uh, he, he doesn't do much hand painting. Everything's by airbrush. Go check out his page, Tokyo Model Detective, 
and uh, try to catch something that he uh, that he was working on. And it's a small scale compared to what I'm doing here. It's amazing. But I hear what you're saying about watching other people because you may be able to pick up some of the basics. But I don't know if I... <laughs> Yeah, I get. I get. I guess there may be something that he he could learn uh, or or re be reminded of, but I doubt it. So Eric says he hasn't had good luck with Tamia. What happened to your paints, Eric? <laughs> yeah, you're uh, you're right, Sal. The way this is going, uh, 2019 is probably is looking like a possible date for you. What's up, Judson? about a Brock custom giveaway <laughs> uh, when I hit a million subscribers. <laughs> okay, so now I think it's I've let this cure long enough. So I'm thinking that I'm going to need more over here. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it, you can still see the divot on there. And I'm trying to make it seem like it's a uh, part of the figure. So again, this stuff is, is fairly sticky, but it responds pretty well to water. So I'm just, that's all I'm doing is I'm putting it in there and smoothing it out with my finger. It has to be wet because if your finger's not wet, then it'll just pick up, I think that might work right there. It'll just pick up your, uh, That'll pick up the putty. Let me see this side. This side needs a little bit more. The side I'm most concerned about is the other arm because it's the... It's, it's somebody that knows comic books well, what's Cable's arm, his, uh, his left arm made of? I tried to look that up and I could not find it and I... And from reading the comic books, I can't remember. I'm not sure if it's like a, like an implant, like a cyborg implant, or if it's kind of like that one episode with Spider-Man and Deathlock uh, in the Sinister Six run quite a few years ago, where it's just his arm was hurt, so they put some like a robotic piece over it to protect it. What material is it made of? So, so, unfortunately, that I think that that edge. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get rid of that. Let's see. So uh, Eric says that the Tamiya paint is a little bit thicker than Vallejo. So you got to watch out for brush strokes. And let me, ask, Eric, did you thin down your paint? And, and if you did thin it down, what did you use to thin it down with? Coke Logic, what's up? It, uh, so Coke Logic says, I'm glad I could catch a live stream to say this. Uh, keep doing this customizing streams. I love watching this stuff. So many great tips for starters like me. So uh, thank you. And, I, and that's the plan as long as I... As long as I'm doing customs and uh, doing YouTube, I think I'll continue doing it because, like I said, when I first got into doing customs, there wasn't that many, there was a lot of stuff like in, in 2D format, people would, would write it down and I don't learn that way. I, and I, I think most people don't learn that way. I think most people learn uh, by watching things in 3D, either onto you know the shorter tutorial videos that I've done or stuff like this where you can watch if you have time and not everybody has time to watch these long streams, which is why I'll do some of the shorter ones. I'll just, uh, I'll film the, what I've done in the past. I've just filmed it, not live. And then I've gone over it and then I've uh, edited, I should say. I wish that action figure. So if action figure Toronto, if anybody knows that guy, that guy's a master. He does phenomenal work. I've seen one of his live streams. He he did a Cyclops, but he did it on one. It was, a, I think, uh, what was it? Switch? Switch? Is that what it's called? Stitch? Switch? 
One of you young guys will know what it is. Twitch, Twitch, it's Twitch. <laughs> so I watched him on there, but he does pretty good tutorials. He's, he's a, you can tell he's a good teacher because of the way he writes his stuff out. And uh, I've picked up stuff from him. I wish he would put that in video form, but I, it takes a lot. It's not easy to edit, guys. Um, so, I, man, I wish that guy would do stuff because th that's a good, he's a gold mine. So, uh, Kokolaji says that it's some sort of cyber disease that's spreading over his body. Really? And um, 123 Black Flag, uh, Flag says te techno virus. Interesting. Interesting. I did not know that. And I remember when this guy first came out. I remember reading all his stuff when he first came out. All right, so getting back to this arm, let me see if... So see, that's the peg. And that peg is protruding. I could shave that down a little bit, but you know what? I'm not going to. We'll say that's part of the virus, if you guys are right. But what I need to do here... What I'm going to do is off, off camera, I'm putting it in water and then I'm just going to trace the lines because this should have been, and my lines are definitely not going to be perfect. Should be another one right here. <laughs> not, not the best sculpt, but when it's all painted up, that's not going to be very noticeable. And that's the difference between somebody. I, I, I like uh, Chris Serta, so I always mention his name, who does customs for, for um, what do you call it? He takes commissions. That's the difference. That's what you get from me. His would look like it's, it's like legitimately part of the figure. That's the difference between the guys that actually do it for money. There's some guys that do it for money that I wouldn't pay a dollar. They couldn't pay me to take their customs. <laughs> I've seen some people put up stuff. Oh yeah, I paid so and so for this, and it's like, uh, player, you was robbed. You was robbed. Okay, I think that's going to be fine. Uh, I've, ha I've, I've had, I bought this like two years ago, and I'm just about to run out. Because I've wasted a lot of this stuff. Bearded Custom says, keep up the good work, Brock. Love watching your videos. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you uh, coming on and even telling me that. Mentally, that helps me out. And knowing that people are actually benefiting from from videos. All right, let's get back to painting that. So the last thing I did was the Kislev flesh. So now I'm going to start doing. I'm going to go back to Flayed One flesh, and what I'm going to do is start working on doing highlights. And again, I got this. Uh, the way I paint this from this guy named Jason Harrop. He, like I said, he's a Star Wars customizer. And he also uh, runs a casting business called the Sarlacc Pit. Very, very good quality casts. Go check him out. I, th it's, I think it's an e-creator site. So if those of you that are into Star Wars and want to try a, a Star Wars custom, he would be a guy to have in your pocket a uh, pocketbook or your phone book there go go check out his site all right so now I'm going to use little brush so now I'm just going to go where the sun would reflect most on his face so obviously it's going to be the cheekbones right here so I'm Doing that, and then I'm just going to dab it with my finger. It lifts the paint a little bit. Actually, let me do that again. And again, patience is key. 
you're not going to get this painted up super fast. So you can see, like, there's some guys that are amazing customizers, like um, the Old Boy Customs. And when they sell their heads for 35 bucks, players, it is worth the 30 or 35 bucks ship that you get from, from that head because it is it takes a while to paint. Tip of the nose somewhere. Again, uh, for if some of you joined late and you're not going to watch this again, I'm going to help you out and tell you when you do the Senethal priming method, you can see where, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to explain that again, but you can see where the shadows and where the highlights are going to be on the figure. Let me, let me see if I can get the light on so you can see what I mean. And that's what you want to duplicate when you're, you're painting. So as you can see, like higher in the mask, it's, it's lighter. Below his lip, underneath his nose, darker, and his ears are darker. The lower parts of the, see like in here, there's shadows. That's what you're trying to replicate when you're painting these figures. So right now I'm doing the highlights. So that's where I'm going. I'm going, and this is just like what looks best now. What looks best? You put it on there. Dab it with your finger. Dab it with your finger. I should probably put a little bit more water in this. So uh, what I should have told you is that this step you want to have, at least I like having it a little bit less than milk consistency. So let's do right here on the brow. I know I'm later going to paint his uh, eyebrows. Sorry guys, that was bumpy ride right, right there. I don't know if you can tell. Let me see if I can change the angle of the light here. I kinda wanna show it here higher so you can. And I'm still not done. There's quite a bit more to do here. Let me move on to the other dude. You guys think that he looks better with the beard? Does he look better with the beard than uh, the original? I kind of like it. I'll take a look at the, the comments in a second. Now he has a scar. Mm. He's got a scar right here. And I'm looking at the sculpt and it's actually raised. I wish they would have made the scar like, I don't know, can you, can you guys see the scar? Let's see if we can get it. So there's a scar right here. And I think that flesh needs to be darker. Hmm. Okay, good. I'm gonna I have a little bit darker one that I'm about to do anyway. 
I'll take a look at the chat in a second. We got 22 people up in here. I'm gonna add some some color to the ear here. It feels like I missed a lot. That poor ear didn't get any love from me. I, like I need to water that down. When your paint gets kind of caked on like that, a good way to resolve it before it dries is just to wet your brush. And you see what it did there? and then dry your brush, and then come back and soak that up, and voila, you start over. And that's how you kind of fix your paint before it dries. My mom taught me that. By the way, shout out to mom. She's the reason I started customizing. <laughs> and some of you have, may, may have heard me tell this story before, but when I got into collecting and I started with Transformers, I didn't like the, the way that Hasbro was doing the plastic before I even started reading anything about people complaining about Hasbro paint apps and stuff like that. I just didn't like the paint apps because here I am, I'm an adult and I didn't really want a kid toy. I wanted an adult toy. So I asked her to like paint a couple up, make them a little bit look more metallic. And uh, she did. But as I started researching it, I wanted her to use. I wanted her to use the the, the nicer paints, the uh, kind of like what I'm using now. She was using like those like folk folklore and and what other paint apps are paints was she using? The ones that you get at you know just at, like Michaels and stores of that nature. And but I wanted her to use the the nicer ones and she didn't like them because they were thin and they are thinner than those paints but it's because it's a layering process and obviously you know she didn't want the she didn't care about the toys she was just doing it because she wanted to help me out but she, she didn't want to waste her time so she was kicking the paint on there but she's she's so good i mean my mom's a like naturally gifted artist and uh <laughs> But I got, I didn't, I didn't want her to use the cheap paints, and that's how I got into painting, <laughs> and customizing myself because my mommy didn't want to paint my toys like I wanted it painted. <laughs> Pretty silly, I know. Pretty silly players. It's not looking. All right, let me let me check out the chat. Appreciate all the compliments, guys. Cable uh, Sith says Cable has the potential of being one of the, the strongest telepaths. Oh, really? Like Strife. Oh, I lost. But he uses his telepathy to keep his techno virus from spreading. Very cool. Brock Essos says Brock WYD this weekend. What you doing this weekend? Uh, I got we got family. My wife's uh, sister's in town with her husband and, and kids. You're actually gonna see one of the kids in my hunt videos. It was awesome. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to. I gotta edit that video. I have footage from like two or three weeks now. So I think we're gonna be hanging out. So I don't know what my weekend looks like yet. Coke Logic says, I own some old boy. He does amazing work. Do, do you know that it's actually, I think it's two guys. The The main guy is kind of like the business guy. And then there's two other guys that do the paint. And they work in stages. So, they, you know, they'll have 30 heads. And then they'll do the first first coat. And then move on to the next coat. And the, the next coat, et cetera, et cetera, all the way. And they do amazing work. X Funny Man 310X asked, "Did you ever finish your Red Hood custom? I haven't even started. I have all the parts. I have so many customs.
planned. And obviously time limitations, uh, I just don't have it. I got, I, I'm gonna do Mysterio custom. I, I, I need the Mysterio figure first though, because I, I'm gonna use that body and I'm just gonna upgrade them. I'm actually gonna, it's gonna be the first time I ever put an LED into a figure. And I'm gonna be using Action Figure Toronto's uh, tutorial to do that. It won't look as good as his, but it'll, I think it, I can get it close. Because the sculpting's been done for me. He did a ton of sculpt on his, amazing work. So I have a bunch of customs. Uh, Red Hood is one of my favorite DC characters. And that's that's actually a very easy custom to do, so I'll be hopefully I'll, I'll be getting to that soon. Mr. Holly asks, "What are some of the nicknames you have for some of your fellow YouTube?" I don't, I don't have nicknames for for any of those guys. I, I mean, I, you know, most of us already have nicknames in our in our names. You know, a lot of us do anyway. 40 Cal says, I'm just starting out customizing and I'm glad I found your channel. Thanks, well, I, I'm glad you found me and I hope that uh, the stuff that I'm doing here, when you go to do it, at least you'll have like a pre-understanding on how to do some of the stuff, which is cool. I'm just letting the paint dry right now, guys. That's one of the, if you came in late, that's one of the things that you need to do. You gotta let the paint dry in between uh, layers. Mike Mordea says, I agree, great tips. I haven't made a custom, but I may try a kit bash. Hey, Mike, I, I really hope you do. Uh, those of you that have Instagram, I, I, have an, I, I have an Instagram that, I'm, that I, I don't really know why, but it's part of social media. And I guess it just helps bring awareness to different things that we're doing. But if you do it, tag me on Instagram. If uh, Most of you may not do YouTube, but I'm sure you have an Instagram account, especially younger folks. Tag me in, and uh, if if you make a custom, I want to see all your customs, uh, even even what you're doing. There will be people on there that will offer help, too. Uh, there's a lot of nice people out there, and uh, it's a good way to meet people that are kind of doing the same thing you're doing. Donk? <laughs> My friends call me Donk. Cody Spring, Donk. Where's that... Uh, Where's that from? Oh, and if you guys don't have the same name, like I, I may fr be friends with some of you guys on Facebook. I don't know if you have a different name here, who you are. So if we're friends on Facebook, uh, as I'm waiting for my paint dry, let me know what your names are. By the way, this doesn't retain the comments. YouTube doesn't retain any of the comments that you guys write here, so no sweat. All right, so the next step, uh, that I'm going to go on to is going to be Cadian Flesh Tone. And what this is going to do, and there's another guy that I've recently come into contact with uh, via YouTube, uh, Kairos1, K-A-I-R-U-S-1. He actually has a, a, like, his channel is like three times bigger than mine, uh, but I don't know what happened because... It, it seems like he should be getting a lot more views than he does but having three, you know, like he almost has like 4,000 people. But anyways, the reason I'm bringing him up is he's been doing a storm custom. And you can tell the qualitative difference between his work and my work, especially when it comes to the sculpting. Meticulous. It looks beautiful. He He's working on a storm and he was putting on the little tiny spikes on her on her collar. And I think he probably does commissions. Because I think this is the second storm that I've seen him do on his channel. Uh, and the reason I was uh, bringing him up is because he the, he uses, and I and I got him, but I, I still don't quite know how to use it, uh, but it's pastels. And it's like a chalk to give it like a rosy look. And what he does is he puts it, he puts it on with a Q-tip and then he sprays some sort of finish on it and it helps the the pastel kind of blend in but i'm not i'm not at that level yet and uh, i think he I, I still have to see him actually do it uh, but i bought the pastels to to try anyway what i'm going to be doing instead is i'm going to be dry brushing this uh, cadian uh, f 
uh, flesh tone. And hopefully that is what's going to give them a little bit more of um, a fleshy color, you know, like a like a blush almost, but not in a girly way because that's Cable and he's bad. He's a bad man. He's bad. So it's going to be a dry brush. I'm going to put very little on the brush. Make sure. Now, wish me luck, guys. See how this works here. So when you're dry brushing, you just want to put a little bit on the brush, and then you go, let me see if you can see, and then you just go here like this, and you you take paint off your brush. And then it's just going to be this motion, and hopefully just a little bit of that. So I'm barely pressing right now. Except for that one, I pressed too hard. Cable's looking tan, boy. Now you know I'm gonna have to do that to his uh, to his arms. I'm gonna have to do this whole same process to to the arms. How does that look, guys? What do you guys think? How does it look in the to you in the camera? From what you know of Cable, do you think he needs to be a little bit lighter than? I think he needs to be a little bit lighter than that, guys. What do you guys think? You did a Mesco cap, 40 cal? Did you do the cl uh, did you do the soft goods for that? I feel like it needs to be paler than this. Like I almost want to mix. I want to see what you guys think. I, I need I need your your opinion here. Let me see if I can get it the flesh. So Doc Brain Frog Fog says, wait, Doc Brain Fog 420 says, <laughs> the 420 is important, guys. Um, he says a little bit lighter, but not too pale. Yeah, I feel like because he's kind of older, except like when you look at that, and I know that's kind of that's life filled. So he's definitely darker there in that picture. Peace out, Eric. Thanks, man. I mean, I know I'm not trying to match that tone, but he's darker there in that picture. Yeah, he's he's looking a little bit on the on the brown brown skin side. I think I'm gonna line him up. And this guy just doesn't, I don't, I don't like the way this one looks. It's over here. I think I struggled with this one because it was less flesh to paint. <laughs> I think I'm going to just uh, 
finalize the faces and the, uh, I think I'll, I'll do the hair on camera too. Although I think I'm out of white, white, white. So I don't know if I'll be able to do the highlights. And I gotta work on this, on a scar. And then I'm gonna paint the uh, the arms, I think, off camera. I may not even get to that tonight. If I don't get to it tonight, then maybe I'll just go live again some other time and and paint it. Been on for a hundred minutes. So now, what I I'm just gonna follow the the procedure and then. Yeah, because I still need to do his stubble. Let me let me run through the chat, see if there's any questions. So Cody thinks it looks it looks uh, good. Forty Cal says I've done mescal cap, Wolverine, Marvel Select. I think I read that already. Uh, kit bash. Oh, you did a kit bash. Okay, gotcha. So you painted it though, right? Cody says, I thought he was always pictured as having dirty face. Hmm. Unfortunately, I only have one cable comic. And I try to look up pictures, Google it. Too bad you guys can't like send pictures because that it would have been helpful. You guys can drop some pictures in the chat. Doc says, I think they always look different because of dirt or sweat, sometimes battle damage. True. And I'm not really looking to do battle damage uh, on these figures, though. Look how clean. Look at that. I, You know, I think he, he did minimal paint job. He, it, that's mostly a, a, a kit bash because he kept the arm. Uh, I, I thought about not painting the arm at all, but it was gonna, I was going to be too anal. Or I don't know if anal is the right word, but uh, it would bother, bother me the different color on the face and the arm. But look how clean that looks, man. That is a magnificent looking cable. That is, I, I, I like the one that came out on the Deadpool, but man, look at that. To me, that looks exponentially better. Adrian Beltran. He's on Instagram, go check out his work. His brother, Henry, is a, uh, he does, um, so Hen uh, Adrian does figures. His brother, Henry, does dioramas, and they're into ACBA. Pretty cool. I mean, I just love, I, lo I saw that one, and I go, I, I have to do it. I have to have that figure in my collection. And guys, you can have it in your collection. Too matter of fact, there's a, a, actually a, a, a popular ACBA artist, Punker Mike, who actually did that kit bash first or similar and uh and that's where henry or, or adrian got it from all right too much talking not enough painting moving on to paint and i'm going to do a wash with this cadian You know, if you guys are interested in learning paint stuff, I've watched a lot of miniature, uh, like Warhammer painting that they paint with Citadel a lot. That's the, the pretty much the, the paint that those, those guys do, the 40,000 40, K or 40 K guys do. What am I looking for? Oh yeah, I'm looking for the water. Where's my little water? There we go. And this is just for ease of use. And I am going to use, I think I'm gonna use that, that brush right there. I'm mixing that right now, so let me, let me see the, the chat. Yeah, 
I don't have a schedule, a cook logic. It's just when, you know, I have time. You know, I, I, uh, I've been off of work now. I'm about to go back to work at the beginning of March. I, I was off due to an injury. I need more water in there. And uh, I've had more time to do the YouTube and put out videos. But I'm going to be limited, really, what I'm able to do because I'll, you know, work Monday through Thursday and then... And then weekends, spending time with my family. And I and I was putting out about a video a week. And the live sessions, the scheduled live sessions that I that I have right now, it's it's the collector spotlights. It's where I interview people. All right, so this is gonna be I, I think I'm gonna put more water. I wanna make sure this goes on really light because he's already dark as it is. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting out a wash and I'm gonna answer your question in a second. I'm working on it. <laughs> But uh, I'm, he's already dark, but I'm trying to blend everything in with this wash right now. So let me, let me, let me just see how that, that goes on, hopefully. So those collector spotlights is when I interview people from nerddom. So that, that's been my most scheduled live. These have been when I have time. Like tonight I had some time. So I'm gonna let that sit and dry. Let me, let me see. I think I answered the question. The black star on his right arm. Yeah, the, the scar. Is that what you're talking about, Cody? Are you going to do the black star on his right eye? Is it a black star? I think it's a... Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. He's talking about that black star, but it's like a, it comes out as a scar. I believe it's a scar. And I've and I, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm not gonna make it black. Is it is this is that comic accurate to make it black? Because I've seen it even the the Marvel Select cable and I'm pointing and you guys can't see. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can fix this phone real quick. It got loose. Careful, guys. If you have mo motion sickness, protect yourselves right now. Just protect, protect yourself, motion sickness. Keep on pointing over here. So what I was gonna do, you know, the Marvel Select, it was just a, uh, it's kind of like a, like a keloid. Uh, and a keloid is that kind of like a raised scar that's reddish. So that's what I was gonna do on that right eye. But now that I'm, I'm thinking about it, it, it does look like a black, star there but here you have his silver arm which kind of looks white here and this straight out of a comic and this looks white over here <laughs> so i think i am going to make it like a like the race scar like i was saying okay now i, I want to make sure this thing oh gosh Motion sickness, sorry guys. I'm trying to get this to turn around so it won't fall. There you go. Oh gosh, that made it worse. <laughs> Come on, players! Now you won't be able to see me paint. What did I do? I completely jacked up this tripod. I need a new tripod. I broke this one and I pinned it. I customized it so it works because I didn't want to spend money on my Brockonomics. Let me see. Let me let me go back down the the chat, and then I'll get back to painting. Have I seen the uh, Doc Brain Fog as? Have I seen the Mesco cable? Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. I am not gonna get them. 
Uh, I did not get the Mesco Deadpool. I I used I got the Mesco Dark Knights Batman, and that was a really like very nice nice figure, but it didn't fit with anything else that I had. It didn't kind of go with the look of it. I guess I could have had it on on a shelf with a bunch of different characters from different lines, but I just decided to not get into the Mesco game. I think I'm gonna get that Dark Side when it comes out. That Dark Side looks awesome. Uh, I'm not too keen on the way that the Mesco uh, the the clothes look on some of the figures, except for that Punisher. That Punisher. I wish I would have gotten that Punisher. Pretty sweet looking. Oh, I have low battery. Hold on, I gotta hook up to power before I lose you guys. Energy. Oh, okay. Let me get to Deckard. I just saw your question. Sorry, I uh, I may have missed it before. What torso am I using? Okay, so I'm I'm actually working on a couple of cable customs. So this is the Marvel Legends cable that I'm using, and I'm kit bashing the Marvel Select parts of the Marvel Select. So I'm gonna be using weapons and holsters and I ended up getting this Toy Biz one and it's gonna be looking like that. But then I recently made a trade with Mr. Brandon Warren from one of the Facebook groups on Syndicate. He wanted, he's a big Transformer collector. I, I, I had some extra Transformers that I didn't collect that had some value and he had a bunch of Marvel Legends and I needed some fodder. So I ended up getting a nuke. So this is the nuke body with some added parts. And I've uh, and I put the Marvel Select arms on there because I didn't feel like sculpting a complete arm. And it and it it fits with the body because the reason I'm doing that is because I just didn't want to what the heck I was it I was not gonna be able to use this on any other figure. So that's what's that's what's up, and then he's gonna have extra parts over here and whatnot. I bought some stuff called blue stuff that hopefully I'm gonna be able to cast some of these weapons, and I'll review that product when I get it. I got that idea from Kyrus One. I mentioned him already. So that's the torso I'm using, and I'm also and I also cannibalized this figure that I picked up, where did I pick, I think I picked up, it was a, um, I almost said God of War. This is a Gears of War uh, figure and I've taken a bunch of his stuff and I'm using it. Matter of fact, I'm using his hands. And one of the hands I have up here, where is it, where's the hand? And I was trying to figure out how to put this hand, uh, because of the way the Marvel Select, they didn't use the same type of peg system on both. So I got creative because, see, watch. Used a magnet. So he has a magnet for a hand. Too bad he's not a character that, you know, I could use, put different types of hands on him. <laughs> but I got magnets to, uh, to use in the Mysterio custom and I wanted to play around with magnets and I, I found a, a reason to use a couple. I also used uh, a couple on the Yoda head that kept on falling off. So those are the parts that I'm using. And I and I did some sculpt on that. Not it was just more like coverage of muscles. All right, let me see if I if I'm uh, so I answered that. 40 cal, I want to learn to make epoxy sculpt. Shoulder armor for Mescal Wolverine. Me too. I pulled 
this is what I was thinking. So I found these figures. If you want to pick up some of these figures, check out your Rosses. They've been hitting Rosses. So what I was thinking, because I am going to be doing, I'm repainting the brown suit Wolverine because I got, check my Instagram. Um, I found some really cool grimacing heads and I'm going to repaint the brown suit Wolverine. And then I'm gonna do the tiger stripe. I'm gonna I'm gonna make my own tiger stripe. Uh, I'm not gonna get the one that's uh, they're releasing. And and of course the tiger stripe one needs the shoulder pad. And let me show you what I wanted to use for shoulder pads. Where is it? So this I I don't know. I'm gonna to try to use it. This was uh, his shoulder pad. I forget which way it went. So what I'm thinking about doing is cutting. I just have to see if the size is gonna work. Cutting because it'd be better if it was a flexible type of material like this, you see? There is flexible resin and I recently bought that. I haven't, I've never used it. So maybe when I do the Wolverine, uh, I'll, I'll mess around with that. And uh, yeah, so I'm thinking about cutting it here and cutting it here and using it for each one and then maybe using that flexible resin and uh, to, to flatten this out completely. And I think that would work. I think that, you know, half of this would work. I don't know, what do you think? And incidentally, uh, if, you're, if you're thinking about um, when you break down a figure and I covered that and and some of my other videos, but you really want to break down your figure to this level when you, you're pulling the pins out, and I show you how to do that. And this is where you want to sand. You want to sand in these areas. And it's better to do it when it's off the figure, because if you do it when it's on the figure, it's going to come out choppy like that. Now, once I put the paint on it, I figured, oh, it's going to be covered by the shoulder armor. I'm not really going to be looking at his armpit all the time. So I went for it because uh like i said i put this together kind of like last minute just because i have the parts might as well let's let me just do it uh you want to sand down the neck you want to sand down all these other things that i cover but uh, if you want to do it correctly you want to break it down all the way down to to these joints all right enough enough said about that almost getting back to painting let me make myself some room again Man, I'm way down. I'm I'm lost on the comments. Okay, I'll I'll spend like a couple more minutes on the comments and then I'll get back to painting. Doc Brain Fox says, by the way, I sub you. I found you just randomly. Great. Tell me how you found me. Uh, because I want other people to find me. For the most part, people are interested in the the custom stuff, some of the toy hunts and the reviews that I do, but let me know how you found me. And maybe I can uh, use that to help other people find me. Cody says, Zuby does some pretty cool painting too. Oh, I've seen her channel. Yep. Yep. I've seen her channel. And you said, yep, yep, too. <laughs> oh, I have a family in town, so I'm not sure what uh, this weekend Sal is going to look for me. You guys are funny. Yeah, true love. When I yeah, man, I'm way late on these. That so that comment is from 9:36. So this I'm reading the comments like nine minutes delayed. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I customized the tripod to save some money. Magnets. That's new stuff I'm doing right now. Cody Spring. Hey, bro. What you figure out the the tide of the joints? On the shoulders, they still look a little loose. Oh, uh, it is. The, it, uh, so I did put some pledge. The problem is that when I fitted this arm and I did, I used hot glue, it's not super tight in that hole. That's what she said. So I just have to keep putting more pledge. But it definitely did get stiffer because it, before it would just fall down completely. Now it's just, it's mainly right here. But look, I'm gonna have them in poses. 
By the way, part of the problem with using these arms is that there's no bicep swivel. Terrible. Marvel Select didn't have bar, <laughs> bicep swivels at one point. I almost thought about giving it bicep swivel, but I go, this is a little bit too much for what I want to do in this project. So if I have the arms here, and it's most likely the area where I'm going to pose it, look, no problem. No problem whatsoever. The problem would be if maybe if I had it like right here, but even then, yeah, it would be that, that would be the problem. And guess what? I wouldn't be shaking it, but I am planning on putting more uh, pledge in there. All right. Conchu. Oh, you found me because of Thanos. Oh, wow. So you just hit that today. So there's a, there's a few Thanos. Uh, so did you look? Doc, did you actually type in custom Thanos? How did you get to my Thanos? That, that would be the, I guess, what I would like to know. All right, let me, let me get back to, did I do the, the wash on this one? I feel like I didn't do the wash on that one. And amazingly, that paint hadn't dried. All right, I'm gonna paint the hair to give me some contrast because I think that maybe that will give me a better understanding of what the what I need to do with a face color. <laughs> Mr. Holly, you're funny. So I am gonna use, not that one, where is it? I wish I had my own little station that I can have all my paints set up in order. So I can't find it now. I guess it's a first world problem. Here we go. So I'm gonna use this air paint. paint. I think I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go back to using this brush. Now air paints, you can, uh oh. I think everything's frozen. I think I'm frozen, guys. I don't know if you guys can hear. Yeah, froze up. Can you hear me? Uh oh. Uh oh, the video's frozen, guys. I don't know what to do. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm back. Can you guys see me? <laughs> I lost. I lost ten of you. Can you guys? Can you guys see me? <laughs> I'm back. Yeah, it was weird. I uh, it just froze, and uh, I'm on my phone, so it's not like I'm on the computer. So I have less options. Anyway, getting back to this, I think we I think we lost like 15 people. <laughs> Thanks for coming, players. All right. But anyway, I I just. Turned off the app and then let me see where I'm gonna paint. Let's do it over here.
I still got to do layers on this. And I feel like I'm going to have to... Uh... See, I don't know if you, oh, you guys didn't even see that, but it went on way too thick. Even for this airbrush paint. But like I was saying, I don't have, I think I ran out of white in my last, uh, one of my last projects. So this is an, what's this called? This is called white gray. So I was hoping to use this white gray as kind of a base and then highlight the hair. Oh, shoot. Shoot. Hurry, play, hurry before it dries. Come on, girl. Okay, again, technique that I learned from my mother. Whew. But anyways, this paint was... I needed to wet this up anymore, a little bit more anyway. I'm gonna have to redo that. If you look at somebody's gray hair, even if they're like frosty white, it's not all frosty white. What's happening here? That f this first layer was a, a fail, by the way, guys. My paint went on too thick. I was expecting it. I didn't test it. I think I lost my mind when my when that video cut out. Yeah, I'm gonna let that dry and then move on to the next guy. Let me see what you guys are saying. Oh, we've got 16 people back. I'm back, Jack. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, Cody asks, have you thought about maybe using metal for his left arm? Might be a little bit difficult, but sure. Metal, a metal what? Like a metal color? If that's what you're asking. So I have a metal medium that I'm planning on using with, we're, see I have, I have a silver there's barely anything in there. So I'm gonna have to, I have to get some more silver. And where's, where's the, here we go. There's a color called Lead Belcher that I think is gonna work for his arm. <laughs> I think it was just, uh, Richie, I think it was because my phone got too low on battery and then I powered it up a little bit on the late side. So a problem here, uh, this is my daughter's. They, they painted before and there was some black paint on there and then I just realized it was mixing in and it was flaking off so I can't use that. So I'm gonna go over here. I should have probably cleaned it. <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs> Just kidding, not a bro. Use a clean area. So I'm not gonna use that brush. So I'm gonna use, that needs to go in there. I'm gonna use this one. Where's my bird? So I, I definitely want this to go on watery. So it gets in all those crevices. But as I, even as I'm looking at right now, it didn't go on as watery as I wanted it to. Oh, well. And I just realized that I forgot to paint Homie G's lips, and you guys didn't help me. You didn't say, Brock, man, you forgot to paint his lips. 
You missed it just like I did. But it's not your fault, it's my fault. Hey, look at that. I don't know what his lips look like. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's a, I think I, I like that color. It's a little bit more natural than the than the white straight out of the the spray bottle I used. Incidentally, if you guys were wondering what primer I used, I used Duplicolor. I shouldn't have painted that area. That area should have been flesh. Anybody else bothered that those lips aren't painted the right color? It's bothering me. I gotta do something about it right now. Let me see if any of this paint is still... All right. That means I'm gonna have trouble differentiating between skin and beard. I need Bugman's glow. Where's that? There she is. When I first started painting, and I think I said this earlier in the event that you missed it, one of the, my biggest mistakes, I, w I would use too much paint. What a huge waste of paint. I, w I spent so much paint, it was ridiculous, guys. Terrible. Does that help? I think that helps a little bit. So I'm not gonna, now I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit. Man, I still feel, I think that's, that's gonna be too tan. So, so Marco, uh, the metal leaf, like a, like a, but I don't understand. Is that uh, the name of the paint? So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm missing what you guys are. Oh, here we go. No actual metal leaf. It's like a micro thin piece of chrome and it adheres when you rub it down. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Metal leaf. That's what it's that's what it's called. I'm gonna write I'm gonna make myself a note so I can look it up later. Alright. So I wrote it down. Johnny, if you have an Instagram can you tag me in that since you used it? Oh, no, you, oh, I'm sorry. You used an aluminum model master paint. Got it. But you have to clear coat it to seal it. So I'm going to, this is all going to get clear coated. Matter of fact, I'm going to let this cure overnight and then I'm going to put a spray on it. But it's going to, I need to actually paint my hair and I don't have enough, I don't have the white. Can you believe it guys? I don't have the white, darn it.
putting a little bit lighter on the lips now. Man, I don't remember. Hey, for those of you guys that have this cable figure, you remember if the hair goes, no, this has gotta be neck right underneath the, the, the ear, right? Yeah, like this part, I think this part needs to be flesh. I think all this part needs to be flesh, darn it. And I painted it on the other side. I haven't done a very good job of painting this head. I know I'm painting it at the same time as the other one. But I just don't feel like I've done the same type of job. I feel like I did better on the select head, even though that beard looks freaking awesome. But I, I think I failed this cable so far. Let me see if I can redeem them by doing some touch-ups. I just gotta let that sit. They got chrome, gold, copper, brass. Cody, can you send me the link? Since it looks like you're you're uh, looking at it. And Johnny, please tag me on that. Uh, I can't. If you have an Instagram, that's the. I think that's the best way. Unless we're Facebook friends. <laughs> you know how that uh, Facebook friends go. But I'd be interested in seeing any custom work that you guys do. I think the easiest place is just to tag on Instagram. For the oil pans, exhaust tips, weather trim. Okay. Well, I, I'd like to take a look. Let's go. Let's go round two on the on the hair here. Was I off screen when I was painted this last round? I just looked at the camera and I'm going, oh boy. I feel like it needs to be, that needs to have more water. You'll hear me say I feel, I, I it, there, there's no right way to do it. It's just when you're, and again, I don't have that much experience, but Sometimes it looks right. I'm definitely an I go with aesthetics. So when I'm doing something, I don't so, sometimes I'll have a plan ahead of time of how I want to accomplish it, like, you know, how do I want to paint the the flesh? But other times it's just like, well, I think this will look good and then I would go do it and it's like, uh, it didn't look like I thought I was going to do, so I, I would redo it. And that's pretty much how I custom. Now there's some geniuses in this game, like Craig Warwick. It's my favorite. I'm a fanboy. Craig Warwick. If anybody knows Craig Warwick has interacted with him, please give me an introduction because I would like to bring him on to Collector Spotlight I haven't messaged him or anything. He seems like a nice enough guy that would respond. But uh, it'd be nice if I had a contact that actually knew him or that knows him. Because then it would be easier to, or I should say it'd be, it'd be harder to say no. <laughs> it would be easy to say no if he doesn't know me because there's no reason to trust. But anyway, uh, he plans his stuff out like he's amazing like he's obviously got art in the background 
I'm not sure if he actually went to school. I don't know if he does stuff vocationally. He may do stuff vocationally, but he's definitely very artistic. And by very artistic, I'm talking about like he'll he'll brainstorm, he'll he'll choose his custom of what he wants to do, and he just goes and he researched the heck out of it, goes read comic books, appearances, just to get a feel for what the character is so he's more than just aesthetics although his his what he outputs is amazing but then he actually like draws his character because it's all he he is a true customizer in the sense that he's he's doing his own design that he comes up with inspired by obviously you know the art and story and then and then he just then he goes and he starts figuring stuff out on the go he may try something to go oh, that didn't work and we'll scrap it and he'll move on to something else the hair's looking better it's a little bit too clumpy here so i'm just going over it with my my brush that's not as wet as the hair wasn't even on camera. Time to do this boy. Yeah, that head sculpt is, uh, if you're referring to the one I had in my hand, it is fire, it is hot, it is the Marvel Select and I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> 40 Cal says, give him that tough bouncer look, the one where it looks like he has a pack of ballpark face on that. Oh man, <laughs> that's funny. Peeps are funny. Hey, uh, I'm gonna be. Uh, I think ne this next week I'm gonna be editing a hunt video. And I have clips, some potentially funny clips. I don't know if you guys have watched any of my other stuff. Uh, some of that stuff you may find humorous from my videos. This is about as this is about as serious as I get right here, guys, while doing this stuff. But I got some good clips of. Uh, I went hunting. I actually helped a buddy. He was gonna go pick up a, a truck, and uh, my buddy, you, you'll see, it's some funny bits there. And then today, I, I had uh, some family come in from out of town, and my my nephew, he's 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 young, and so we had some good times going to uh, Toys R Us, and we were actually hunting for figures for his budget in his budget because he had uh his budget was 10 bucks <laughs> so i'm gonna be editing that video hopefully this next week and it'll be hopefully a fun watch the only new thing that i've personally found is that kratos and if you guys haven't picked that up, and maybe you may have to go like to a big bad toy store to pick it up. I don't know if your Toys R Us will still have them. My Toys R Us sold out. I contacted Plastic Attic because I know that he's a, he's a fan. And I asked him if he wanted me to pick it up. And then I thought of another guy, Eric Eisner, who... Uh, who does a lot of like ACBA shots and this figure was impressive in the box and I'm going oh he could he could use this for his ACBA so I contacted him and he told me no I think I'll pass for now <laughs> and I said you sure player okay so I got home and I did a review of the figure go check out that review guys and you can see what I mean if, if you don't know what I'm, what figure I'm talking about but uh he sees my review and he goes, hey, bro, uh, if you happen to come by it again. So I went the next day and they were gone. And uh, you got to you got to pay attention to the paint apps, even, even though, you know, most of the paint apps were pretty darn good. 
pay attention to the paint apps if you end up going and getting those figures because there's some that are better than others. And I was I wasn't that Toys R Us initially for me because Plastic Attic didn't respond to me right away. So I left Toys R Us after I picked the figure for me. And then there's a Walmart that I ended up going to that was close by to the Toys R Us. And then that's when Plastic Attic hits me up and he says, uh, yeah, I will most definitely take that figure. So I went back to Toys R Us and I spent another, I don't know how many minutes finding him the best paint apps on that one too. I definitely need, I need a lighter white that I want to dry brush over here. So then what, what, what will happen is when I dry dry brush, that's the, that's the technique that you go and you rub the paint on the paper towel and you, I'll go through here and it'll catch all these little raised hairs and I'll highlight them. And that's what I like to do. And I want to do the same thing with the beard. Yeah, I, I agree, Doc. The uh, the tattoos, it, it's not super clean. I don't know what they were trying to do. I don't know if that was a mess or what. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say about that. Okay, well, guys, I think... I think I'm gonna be done for now because I don't have the white that I have and uh, I have to think about how how much lighter I wanna go and I wanna play around with paints and I sure don't want you guys just watching me play around with paints. So I think I may pick this up uh, maybe again sometime tomorrow and I'll, I'll be painting the, the rest of the figure. As you can see, tell, an hour and 35 minutes an hour and 35 minutes, and obviously I could have gone faster, but it's, uh, you gotta watch, you gotta watch paint dry sometimes. So that's where we're at, guys. Uh, let, me, let me run through the chat, make sure I haven't missed any questions, and then I'll sign off. Google bare metal co copy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll up right now. All right, let me see. I'm running through the chat right now from about 10 minutes ago. All right, thanks, Johnny. Yeah, uh, I think Instagram, if you tag me on your Instagram, that'd probably be best, especially since it's just pictures. But also friend me on Facebook, Brock Rivers. Thanks, Cody. Uh, is the sale over at Toys R Us? Yeah, there was no sale, and my Toys R Us is picked over. Uh, the new the new Kratos is kind of like a 112 scale, but it's up. It's one scale up from that. I'm not sure what that is. They do have a 14 scale Kratos, but uh, the one that I picked up, it's like a 7-inch figure, like a 7-inch scale instead of a 6-inch scale. I wish they would, I mean, that's NECA scale, right? I wish they would have done it uh, in six inch just because it would go with with the rest of the stuff in my collection. Uh, okay, so you, okay. So you think skin tone is, is good here? I just have to work on that scar. Uh, I want to think it through of, of what color I want to use there. I, I still need to do some, uh, I want to do a wash on that. I need to paint that eyeball. And I need to do a wash on this area. And that's what I'm planning on, I'll do it next time. And I definitely want to do, you see how it's all, it's just too, too plain right now. And I definitely want to add different colors to give it more of a, a, a texture look. So I, because I want to bring out the sculpt of that beard. And guys, oh, and, and here's, I'll give you the, 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 what I did. I should have done it when, when this was a little bit softer. But what I did was I made little balls like this, smaller than this. Let me see if I can do it. Stand by. Stand by, please. So, 
I literally made a little ball like this and I put it on the chin. And then I started, I dabbed it, dabbed it, dabbed it, formed it with a toothpick. And then I did, I kept on pum, putting little balls on, on, I didn't just put one big thing and, and clump it on there. So I did it in stages and I, and I put it on there and I shaped the beard how I wanted to. So I did the Lord Beal. He had like a Quaker. He looked like a Quaker. He, I didn't do the mustache initially. So I did the beard and then I just started doing, I wet the toothpick and then I just started doing striations like this. And that's, and that's what you're getting right there. That's the straight, just from the toothpick. And then I would use a little bit of water, put a little bit of water. Uh, I would put actually a little bit of water on the toothbrush and then run it over to smooth it over, okay? And then I did the mustache. Oops. With a piece a little bit smaller than that. And I put it and I squished it on there just tapping it like this, forming it with the toothpick. And then I actually like took some of it off at the end because it was too long. It was extending all the way down here. And, uh, and then that's what I did. I took it off, but I let it sit. And that was the, the trick with this stuff. If you do it too early, it's too malleable. So you want to let it cure a little bit and then that's when you start doing the striations right so i shaped it and i let it sit and then i came back to it you know 10 minutes later or 15 minutes later i can't remember how, how long it was and that's how i did that what do you think of this color of the silver uh, or no silver? just the, the skin colors that looks good you think it looks good mm -hmm. uh what race would you say these guys are based on what they look like? I don't know. Would you say that they're white, Hispanic, black, Asian? What would you say if you had to take a guess? Take a guess, honey. A white person. A white person? Would you say a white person like me or a white white person like mommy? I like mommy. Like mommy, really? Okay. Not really, but. Okay, then why would you say mommy? <laughs> because they, she, and these paint jobs have closer skin color than you. Oh really? I think Do you so. think I'm darker than these guys? A bit or a tanner. You think I'm tanner? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Were you wearing your glasses? <laughs> She wasn't wearing her glasses. The bearded guy looks Jewish, she says. Oh my gosh. Like I said, it's, uh, so Doc says, like I said, it's lighter, but too, not too pale if you compare the two heads. Yeah, uh, the bearded is a little bit lighter for sure. I, I'm definitely gonna line up uh, this one for sure. I'm definitely gonna line it up. I gotta still highlight, there's still more painting to do on those. Norway, bearded Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren can get uh, tan though. I've seen that guy get tan, or is it? Maybe it's a, maybe it's a spray tan. All right, guys. Well, uh, I've come to the end. Again, thanks for uh, watching me live, and uh, I'll go live again, and hopefully I'll I can give hints to you, those of you that maybe are not as far along as as me. But I can also learn from you guys too. Uh, being active in the comments, I'll take a look. I'm willing to learn new things and add stuff to my tool belt. All right, folks, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.